Next Sunday, Jim Duncan. We look forward to hearing that wonderful teaching again. And the TLC men and TLC women gathered last Thursday, and it's always so rich. And uh, in the women's group, we talked about do not walk by your five senses, but walk by faith. We don't walk by sight, and the, but by faith. The just live by faith. So get rid of all those senses that try to grab you and make you emotional so that you don't do what God says to do. So just a little thought for this week. And um, the scripture that the Lord put on my heart is Jesus saying in John 6, 63, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. They are spirit. So get into the word this week and get spirit and life in your life. So now. We get to, as Zosh always says, to give the tithes and offerings. We thank you, Father, that we are supporting all these places around the world that need help, that they live by faith. They have no guaranteed income. They live by faith. So, God, we are so thankful to keep this ministry going all around the world. In Jesus' name, and God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. Good morning. It is so good to have you here this morning. I am blessed by your presence and uh, by the presence of the Holy Spirit this morning. Dear God, we thank you right now for your son, Jesus Christ, who made this all possible, Father, who you sent your son so that we could have life and have it abundantly. So that, Father, we didn't have to live under guilt and sin, that you paid the price for that. And we thank you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, so how was the nice, cool weather this morning? I hope you liked it, huh? <laughs> oh, man, it started yesterday afternoon, and I realized I needed my flannel. And then this morning, I walked out with just this shirt, and I had to turn right back around and get a jacket. Man, it feels great. And it's going to be feeling this way tomorrow, so be prepared. Yeah. Carol and I were talking a while back, and I had actually forgotten about it until she reminded me. You know, that's... These things happen when you start getting older. You forget things, right? And uh, if anybody can identify with that, you can say amen. Huh? Oh, good. It's not just me. Not only the physical side of security, of situational awareness and sight hardening, which are the two benchmarks on safety, but you've got to worry about cyber security now. I'm telling you, the incidents and the information that uh, Paul and I get is mind-blowing on what's going on in the cyber world. It's not just going to a bad site anymore. It's any link in an email, you better be real suspicious. You better know what it is before you click on that link. Because embedded in that link is what's called malware. And it will get in your computer and it will start running programs that you can't even see. Cities and states and even the federal government is being held hostage with ransomware, which is usually brought in through an email that somebody thinks is just an email and they click it and it goes in their address books and they study the corporation and they get the head people and then they try to spoof an email and send it to all these other employees so that they'll click on the link. It's just amazing. It's frightening. And it can be unsafe because they can do a thing called a key logger where it records what you're keying in, such as passwords and usernames. Oh, your, sh your ship is sunk. A and not only that, but what can happen is they can go through even telephones. They can spoof your telephone. You get a little text message from somebody, you're thinking, what kind of link is this? On a text message, you click it, and it's not the right link, you've got trouble in your phone. All these things still can occur. How to be safe in an unsafe world? You better pay attention. You better open up your situational awareness on everything that you do. Be cautious. Be watching out. Yeah. 
And that's just the physical side. But you can apply those same things to the spiritual side. Uh, you know, it's funny because on the spiritual side, it was talked about quite a bit this morning. And uh, it was the armor of God. In Ephesians 6.10, it talks about this. It says, finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, and I can promise you, it'll come again and again and again. When the day of evil comes, you'll be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to this, take up the shield of faith that you can extinguish all flaming arrows of the evil one and put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. I want you to know there's a great story in the Bible about these concepts, how to be safe in an unsafe world physically and spiritually. And, and here's where it started with in Nehemiah 4. It started with King Nebuchadnezzar. He was an evil Babylonian king. And after one of the Israel leaders refused to pay him tribute, what he did is he came through, he demolished the royal court, he tore down the wall, and the wall remained in its fallen state throughout the entire Jewish exile until Nehemiah made it his personal mission to rebuild it. And that was in Nehemiah too. Also, King Nebuchadnezzar took the youngest and the brightest people from Israel, captivity made them slaves, but enter Nehemiah. Nehemiah was a cupbearer for the Persian king Artaxerxes, and he was released from captivity by this Persian king after he heard the distress and the destruction of the wall in Jerusalem. He received a letter from the king to travel to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall and restore order. And the king sent troops with him so we'd have safe passage. But I'll tell you this, just like anything in your life, when you're trying to rebuild something, when you're trying to rebuild your life or your relationships, when you're trying to rebuild your health, your finances, your mental attitude, when you're trying to rebuild your husband and wife or your children or your job or your faith, when you are trying to rebuild something that has fallen or crumbled, when you're trying to rebuild something that's been destroyed, you're going to have detractors. You're going to have people that don't want you to take the steps to rebuild it. Misery likes company. And it takes courage to do the right thing. It takes strength to do the right thing because you have to climb up the steps to do the right thing. You can stay where you are or you can go down, and that's the wrong thing. So there was a couple of detractors for Nehemiah. Now, I've heard different ways to pronounce these names, so just everybody ought to give everybody grace. Sanballat, or others have said Sanballat, and Tobiah. They opposed this wall being built, reconstructed, built back. You see, some people just glory in destruction. My father would tell me, some people will just go hit a hornet's nest just to hear them buzz. Or they'll go buy a cow patty that's crusted over, and they'll hit it with a stick. just to smell it. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> but there are people that all they want is your destruction. 
All they want to do is hinder your progress. They never want you to rebuild. There's forces against you that are spiritual forces, and there's physical forces that don't want you to rebuild. They don't want you to go where you're trying to go. They want to stop you. They want to hinder you, and they want to oppose you. Listen to what Sanballat said. What are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble, burned as they are? You've seen the pictures of the wildfires in California. We've had wildfires here. I don't know if you've ever seen a concrete block house that was burned. It's so hot that even the cement and the block will turn to dust. And here's Sanballat saying, what are they going to do? Bring those stones back to life from those heaps of rubble? You see, what he wanted to do was discourage them. He wanted to make sure that they understood that the battle that they were fixing to do, the job that they were fixing to do to rebuild the wall. Do you have a wall that needs rebuilding? Are there some weaknesses somewhere? I'll promise you that there will be people that will want to oppose you. They'll want to mock you. They'll want to discourage you. Listen to what Tobiah said. Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side. See, they were buddies. You can get with people that have like mind, and all they want to do is team up and pick on you. These guys were bullies. Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at his side, said, what are they building? Even a fox climbing up on it would break down their walls of stones. You see, criticism and discouragement is those that see you moving forward, that's what they'll offer you, criticism and discouragement. I mean, we work differently if we're under faith or if we're under discouragement. We pray differently if we're under faith or we're under discouragement. We act different if we're under faith or if we're under discouragement. You see, we've got a, we've got a choice to make. Who are we going to believe? Sanballat and Tobiah? Or are we going to believe God? You see, you may not have it all worked out in your life. Pastor Bonnie was talking about it this morning. You may not have everything working for you, but you're working towards it. You're working towards perfection that God has promised us through Jesus Christ. You're walking in that. You can't stop. Don't stop. Don't be distracted. Don't let the uproar come and get you. So you may not have it all worked out, but you're working it out. But here's what Nehemiah had to say to Sanballat and Tobiah. He said, hear us, our God, for we are despised. I want you to understand that, first of all, he prayed. Turn their insults back on their own heads. Give them over as plunder in a land of captivity. See, when you're facing discouragement and criticism, when you're trying to rebuild your life, or someone else's life, how to be safe in an unsafe world, the first thing that you should do is pray. You should pray. We talked about prayer this morning. How do you know if it's, how do you know if it's God? It's a feeling. It, it's confirmed. Does it go against the word of God? Are you praying for something that goes against the word of God? Well, I'm sorry. But that's not it. No. You see, Nehemiah didn't call his friends and buddies and say, what do you think? He, he didn't get on Facebook and blow up Facebook about what he thought that Sanballat and Tobiah were saying and asking everybody and getting their comments or their thumbs up or their hearts or whatever it is. He, he did go on Twitter and try to get a lot of followers. He didn't go here or there. He prayed. When you are facing adversity, when you're facing something that's not safe, 
Be in a state of prayer. Stay there. You see, God gave Nehemiah a job to do, and he got to, he got to doing it. See, in this unsafe world, we're asked to share the gospel. But the first thing we need to do is pray. And the second thing we need to do is to let God do the battle. It says in, in Nehemiah 4, verse 6, it says, So we rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. H have you ever done something and got halfway? You know, it's easy to quit at halfway. I got these walls kind of built. I got an area in my house. It's an it's a office. And I really want to clean it up. And I've started a few times on it. Now, we had a medicine cabinet. And Tracy went through that thing like a Tasmanian devil. And everything is in order. You see, you can stop when you get halfway to where you're going. It's easy to stop. Look at what I've accomplished. I've got halfway there. I've almost made it. I might can be able to get it again. But don't stop. They reached half its height, for the people worked with all their heart. And it says, meanwhile, the people in Judah said, the strength of the laborers is giving out. And there's so much rubble, we cannot rebuild the wall. When you look around, you think, how am I going to get this done? There's so much trash here. There's so much stuff here. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Don't give up. Don't be discouraged. Don't stop halfway. Pray. And let God do the battle. See? Half done is not done. It's halfway done. Partial obedience is disobedience. Oh, man. I'm going to be obedient in this area, God, but I'm not here. In verses 11 and 12, the enemies threatened to attack, but they didn't. And the other Jews around heard the enemy and they got afraid. But Nehemiah was not discouraged or was afraid. How to be safe in an unsafe world? Don't be afraid. Do not fear. I am with you. My rod and my staff, they comfort you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Know what God can do. Through prayer, know what God wants you to do. And don't be afraid. In verse 13, here's what Nehemiah did to bring everybody back. Here's what you may need to do with yourself. You know, King David had to encourage himself in a cave. You may have to encourage yourself. You may have to bring it up yourself. He says, therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places. And I posted them by families with their swords, spears, and bows. Bonnie had a great picture up here today with a sword, a spear, and a bow. They took up weapons. They worked together. When you're under attack, inaction is, is not an option. You lose. If you don't do something, you'll do nothing. And nothing is failure. If you are working towards rebuilding your children, you can't stop. Not even when you're an older mom or older dad. They're still your children. Get with your family. Get with your church family. Get with the family of God. Deuteronomy 20 verse 4 says this, For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you victory. God has got victory for you. He had it for Nehemiah. And he said this in verse 14. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people, 
Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons, your daughters, your wives, your homes. You see, in Chronicles 2015, it says this. It says, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all those who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. We either trust God or not to fight our battles. Some things are worth fighting for. If somebody gives you the finger at the red light, that's not worth fighting for. But there's many fights that are for that. It's the wrong thing. You got to pick your battles. You want to be safe in an unsafe world? You better think about the battles you're going to fight or what you're going to start or how it's going to start. If you're on the way to growing closer to God, giving things up, giving things up, working on things, working things out that are worth fighting for, that's how you're safe. He says this, when our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we returned to the wall, each to our own work. Pray. Let God have the battle. And don't be discouraged. Get to work. God's got work for all of us. And from that day on, half of my men did the work while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind the people of Judah who were building the wall. And those who carried materials, they did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. There is a trumpet that's going to sound. The Bible's clear about it. Are you ready for that trumpet? If you're not ready for that trumpet to sound, for those with the family of God drawn up, now's your time. You can be ready today. You can put yourself in a position, praying, letting God do the battle, getting to work. First thing you'd have to do to be in a family of God is to give your life to Christ. Yield to the Lord. And you may be a mature Christian. And you may be building something. Who is your Sanballat and Tobiah? What are they doing to you today? Don't let your children go. Don't let your family go. Don't let your faith go. Fight. Fight the fight that God has for you. He will be with you for victory. How to be safe in an unsafe world. Believe in God. Dear Lord, I thank you today for your son. Lord, I thank you that Nehemiah had the faith, the strength, and the power to move forward to do what you had for him to do. Father, when we are rebuilding, don't let us be discouraged. Let us put our eyes on you. Let us grab a hold of you, God. Move forward with you wherever that is. And Father, we give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. The victory is mine when the battle is the Lord's. Hosanna, Hosanna. That sounds good. The victory, victory is, is mine, mine when the battle is